I'm here with Robert Kirkman, author of The Walking Dead. Robert, how are you today? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. How's your Comic-Con so far? Exciting. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I bet. Well, let's talk about it. Let's dive in. This is the 10th anniversary for you. You were here for the game, the show, and, of course, the comic. What's it like for you to have seen the massive expansion of this world? It's very bizarre. I don't know. It's nice. I like it. It's a cool thing, but uh, it's kind of weird. I'll be honest. <laughs> you know, the AMC CEO has said that he sees kind of endless, infinite story possibilities for The Walking Dead, and you designed the comic also to keep running like Why the Last Man. But in terms of the show, have you guys talked about how that would work, how you would be 10 years down the line? Well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting world, and I think that the idea of The Walking Dead is seeing how these people survive in this world long term, and in order to do a long term show like that, ideally that would last for a great many seasons. Uh, I don't know if it would last forever, but uh, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to that when it gets down to it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, just, I think there's a lot of potential, and uh, you know, we'll see how long it goes. Hopefully it'll go for a while. You know, it's one of the things that, it's one of the things that you would sort of do is is maybe reboot and look at different leaders or even do spin-offs that do different sort of looks at this world with people we haven't met yet. Yeah, I, I, I find it's better to do that in different mediums. I think that uh, it's really cool that uh, we have the novel series out that's, you know, delving into like different stories and stuff like that it, that's separate from the comics. And then we have the Telltale video game that, yep. you know, deals with an uh, entirely different cast uh, and a different part of the world. And uh, I think it's cool that, you know, you get a video game experience, you get a novel experience, you get a comic book experience, you get a TV experience, and they're all somewhat different, but they're all in the same world, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about the Telltale game. I know that you're you're doing a panel with our own Greg Miller later on. Very exciting. So this is hugely popular. What's it been like for you to sort of see the excitement around the game, to play it yourself? It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, video games are uh, somewhat of a world that I don't really understand. I mean, I, I play games uh, uh, sometimes, but I try to stay away so uh, I actually get work done. But uh, playing the Telltale game is, is really remarkable. I love that it's so story-based. I think it really gets to the heart of what makes The Walking Dead cool. You know, it's the fact that, you know, you're watching these characters live and you're invested in their lives. It's not necessarily so much about, like, running around and hacking people up with a machete, which yeah. a lot of zombie games are about. I think that uh, Telltale as a company, you know, like understands The Walking Dead and like knows what makes it cool. And I think that that shows through in the game 100%. Can you talk a little bit about what we might expect to see from season two of the game? Oh, you know, I can't, uh, I don't know. Uh, there, there's certainly going to be uh, uh, some carryover from season one into season two, but I can't say exactly what or how or who. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll say uh, Lee Everett's not going to be in it. Is that a spoiler for the first game? I don't know. No, you know I think it, we're fine. <laughs> I think we're fine. That's not a spoiler. But yeah, there should be some more information given at the panel tomorrow. But uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be cool. You know, I talked to Gail and Heard uh, just sort of in general about what zombies have meant throughout. In different, of course, people have talked about Romero and consumerism. Mark Forster said that his zombies in World War Z were really about resources and the desperation for resources. What do you think that your zombies are sort of tapping into? I mean, I tend to think of it more about humanity. You know, I know that there are, you know, all kinds of great social issues that you can explore in terms of, you know, zombies and, uh, you know, using that science fiction as a backdrop to, like, explore, like, real meaningful topics, uh, which is great. Uh, and, and I don't know, the one that I think about is, you know, uh, uh, just personal interaction and how we exist in a society and how we work together and, and live together. I think that, uh, you know, the zombies in The Walking Dead tend to be, like, a, a, a really, like accurate mirror of who we really are at our core at times and it's not necessarily something that we like but I love exploring that side of ourselves and like uh, just seeing like what uh, uh, you know how horrible people can be and how great people can be that that's the thing for me is that the game really confronts sort of the decisions that the player is going to make and the show does and the comic does it's all about what you would do, why, and what the consequences of those choices would be. So is that maybe a little bit what it's about? Like morality is a moving target? Definitely. Definitely. Morality is a moving target. That's, uh, <laughs> thank you for coining that. That's good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, the game in particular, I think, is really cool because the player actually gets to sit on a couch and make horrible decisions from their couch. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I, I hope that while you're playing that game, you get to think like, am I a bad person for doing this? People like, are am I doing that. this the right way? Like, what? What? Like, it seems like the right decision at the time, but 
it, like this seems horrible. So, you know, it's fun, like, you know, exploring that a little bit in a, in a safe environment. Yeah, I think people are thinking that. They're feeling very confronted about who they are as people. Let's talk a little bit. The show has introduced some of the com comic characters in a little bit of a different way, but then sometimes we circle back. Mm -hmm. like it looks like Tyrese and Rick might start to be friends. Might be a little bit of circling back in season four. Uh, I think uh, Tyrese is one of my favorite characters from the comic book series, despite the fact that, uh, spoiler alert, I, I eventually killed him in the comic book series. I mean, you know, it happens to most of them. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, having him back in my life and being able to, like, write him for the show is really exciting. And I love working with Chad Coleman. I think he's a fantastic actor. And, you know, I think that... Uh, we didn't do a lot with Tyrese in season three. You know, we introduced him. We did some really cool stuff, but you know, he didn't really come to the forefront as much as he's going to be in season four. And I think that uh, a lot of that Rick Tyrese relationship that people felt was missing in season three uh, is coming around in season four. So people have that to look forward to. I'm sort of curious how Daryl is going to impact that because right now Daryl's kind of Rick's right hand man. So is there going to be tension? People can have multiple friends. <laughs> you know. Uh, there might be a bit of a Tyrese Daryl rivalry. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Well, Daryl's also going to be pretty busy dealing kind of with the repercussions of Merle's death. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's awesome. Have you been getting a lot of that? No, that's never happened before. Really? I, I mean, you must be getting a lot of that at Comic Con. <laughs> Every now and then, it's nothing. You guys didn't hear, but basically people just yelled out how much they love Robert. That's what just happened. <laughs> this, this is awkward. We've ruined the interview. <laughs> abort. Abort. No, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you with the governor still in play. Might we see sort of circling back around to another confrontation with Rick or even with Michonne? We'll definitely have to see. I mean, the governor is very much in play. Uh, he's out in the mix, you know. He's he's in the weeds, as we like to say. Uh, nobody knows, you know, like where, where that's going to you know come to pass but uh he is still very much in play and when he comes into season four he's going to come at a time when you least expect him oh really oh yeah so he's not there at the top you never know maybe you don't expect him at the top and he is at the top one of the things that, i mean with a character like that who's just been so villainous um but he's really lost everything he's you know he he's lost what he lost penny yep. he lost what he had to fight for so with someone like that, you've got to give him something new to, to fight for, some kind of new dimension. What were the conversations about where you wanted to take his character? Is there a redemption path possible? That's definitely possible. Uh, I don't know if I would count on it per se, but uh, we're going to go into some really interesting uh, places with the governor. I mean, he is a character who at the end of season three has been stripped away to nothing. Uh, he even slaughtered most of his people from Woodbury, so he doesn't even have his followers, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to do uh, a lot with the guy, and uh, I can't really go into any details as to uh, where we're going to pick him up or what he's going to be doing when we pick him up in Season 4, but I can say that uh, we're going to be going into some new territory with him. Okay. Well, one of the one of the things that I also talked to Gail and heard about was how each season sort of like these parallel to date was these sort of parallel looks at leadership. It was Rick and Shane, Rick and Herschel, and then of course Rick and the governor. I'm wondering if this season becomes about Rick and Carl in a way, given well, the events of the, the finale. Yeah, Rick and Carl are definitely a central theme to season four. I mean, we saw him uh, basically execute that kid from Woodbury at the end of season three, and that's something that's gonna be weighing on Carl quite a bit, but more so on Rick. You know, this is Rick uh, terrified that he's losing his son to this world uh, after everything that he's tried to do to prevent that. And uh, that's going to inform a lot of Rick's behavior this season. So we're going to see a very different Rick Grimes coming into season four. Yeah, one of the questions that everybody had, it was a big debate. Did Carl do the right thing? Um, what's your take? Uh, I, yeah, I don't know, people don't want my take. Uh, uh, no, I mean, the kid was definitely surrendering. I mean, he, uh, uh, I think, overshot things a little bit and uh, possibly shouldn't have killed that guy. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, who's to say, I mean, that's the real trouble with that you know who's to say that that kid wasn't going to stab him you know after he put his gun down you know you never know in this world and that's why it is such a gray area yeah i mean but this season can also sort of become about and i don't know i could be wrong you said that we're going to see big changes but rick versus lack of resources because now he's got all of these other mounts to feed and mm -hmm. how does that sort of affect his, the way that he is even able to lead 
Yeah, I mean, that's going to be something that's going to be, uh, you know, weighing on them quite a bit is how to how to function in this new society that they've built. The prison is built up. They've brought a lot of people in from Woodbury. They found new people. I'm going to spoil that. There's new people in the mix. Uh, and, uh, you know, having the resources to support that many people, you know, living peacefully in this environment is, is going to get unwieldy pretty quickly. Beth is the one character, she did get suicidal, obviously, sure. at, at one point. but she's Briefly. The, briefly, very briefly. But she's the one character that's really sort of maintained this sense of innocence. Are you going to take her to any darker places coming up? Yeah, I, I, I'm really proud of the fact that, like, every character, you know, has something pretty big going on with them in season four. And Beth is probably chief among the characters that have something really, you know, interesting brewing with them I'll say uh, but uh, yeah we're gonna be exploring like just how much this world has affected her and how um, you know leaving her home and being brought into this world and you know dealing with everything she's had to deal with uh, you know is, is gonna be uh, it's weighing on her as much as it weighs on the other characters and but changing her in some different ways I think people aren't gonna expect what's coming with her Kind of circling back to Daryl for a minute. There, there's two things about Daryl. He's such a popular character. I mean, was he this something that was popular. a surprise to you? A, what sort of? What do you think it is about that character that people? I know why I connect to him, but no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a lot of it is Norman Reedus. I mean, yeah. I'll just go ahead and say it. The guy is a bit of an acting dynamo. I mean, you know, the writers are always talking about like, whoa, I didn't think he would like say it like that. Or the way he's like moving while he's delivering that line is such a unique thing that like adds so much to the portrayal of the character and blah, blah, actor, Hollywood, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, the guy does a really good job and he just he owns that character in such a really cool way that, uh, you know, you just get mesmerized by like watching him on screen. Um, there's a, I don't know, there's a scene in the premiere where he goes to shake, shake hands with a guy and he like licks his fingers really quick because he's eating something and then shakes hands with the guy and it's such a weird thing for him to do and we didn't really expect it and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really cool moment. But uh, it's just little stuff like that that he throws in that I think uh, just make the character so personable. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a mystery man too. Like there's a lot going on with that guy that we don't really know about. So uh, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a fun character to write. And I think, uh, you know, Norman always knocks it out of the park and he ends up being a cool character. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot to do with his performance. But I think also maybe one of the other things. It's also the crossbow. The crossbow People does like crossbows. not hurt. But I think it's also poncho, the poncho. The it's motorcycle. All of it. Keep going. What else? All of the accoutrement. But I think it's also that he's the one person that's been made a better man by this situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, is that kind of influence? I missed that one. Good job. <laughs> no, it's it's good seeing someone improve in this world. You know, it's, it is a show about people that go to very dark places because of everything that's happening to them. And for him, he's a character that came from a dark place that was, you know, everyone else in The Walking Dead was you know, having coffee on Sunday morning and taking their kids to school. And, and that was not what Daryl's life was before the zombie apocalypse. His life was pretty rough. And, um, you know, I think it's made him a little bit more accustomed to this world, a little bit more acclimated to what he's going to have to do. But it's also given him, you know, room to grow. And I think the fact that he has actually, you know, become a better person is, uh, it's a really unique thing. And it's a really cool juxtaposition against the other characters. You know, I wanted to ask just finally, in addition to The Walking Dead, which is obviously a huge undertaking, what are some of the projects that you've got on in the, sort of in the works outside of that? I mean, do you are you developing other television shows? What would they be? I know that you are. Like, what would they be? Yeah, I mean, I got a few irons in the fire. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I can't talk about yet, but uh, Thief of Thieves, another yeah. comic book that I do, is yeah. in development. Uh, so we're trying to figure that out right now. Uh, there's a lot going on with The Walking Dead, so that's always an ongoing process. But, you know, here at Comic-Con, like, I, I love comics. Like, that's my first love. And, you know, I still write The Walking Dead comic monthly. I still write Invincible. I have another book I do for kids called Super Dinosaur. That's a really awesome book about a dinosaur that shoots missiles. It's fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, re I'm really invested in that world, and I, and I love comics. And so uh, I like having my feet, you know, firmly in, like, the television world and the comics world and being able to do a lot of cool stuff with, uh, with both mediums. Do you think that you'd ever take on a TV show that wasn't an adaptation of one of your previous works? Uh, you know, maybe eventually. I don't know. I mean, who knows what the future holds, but, yeah. uh, you know, we'll see. Okay. Maybe someday. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here oh, today. We're really excited. Make sure to check out the panels. And for all things Comic-Con, keep it locked to IGN. Thank you.